Hi everyone, this is Shantosh and you are watching my YouTube channel Microscopy for All. In my last video, I talked about the transmitted light illumination trend, different components of bright field microscope and their functions, and finally I spoke about color illumination and its importance before starting with transmitted light microscopy. I hope after watching my last video, starting with your bright field microscopy will be more and more easy to use. This will also help you to understand how an image is formed in a light microscope, which we are going to learn today. During this, we will also learn about few keywords such as diffraction, ARE disk, point spread functions, numerical aperture, resolution, and so on. It is very important to have an appreciation of the fundamental principles of microscopes that determine the resolution contrast seen in microscope images. The knowledge of wave nature of light is essential for understanding the physical basis of diffraction, image formation, resolution, selecting objectives, and so on. Visible light is the agent used as an analytical probe in light microscope. This is a form of energy called electromagnetic radiation. This visible light appears as white which is a combined light of individual rainbow colors ranging from 380 to 740 nanometer. This energy is contained in discrete units or quanta called photons that have both the properties of particle and waves. These photons propagate as a pair of electric and magnetic fields that oscillate in phase and two naturally perpendicular planes. The vectors vibrate in two planes perpendicular to each other and the direction of the propagation. For convenience, it is common to show only the E vector of a wave in a graph or in diagram. In our human perception, brightness is related to the amplitude and intensity is the energy flask, which is uh, the rate of uh, flow of light energy per unit area per unit time across the detector surface. The human eye brain system perceives differences in light intensity and wavelength of the color, but uh, does not see the difference in the phase of light or its state of polarization, which is known as the angle of vibration. But we have microscopes as for example, uh, the phase contrast microscope, which converts these invisible uh, phase differences of light due to sample into a brightness difference to enhance the contrast. We will learn about some of this contrast enhancing micro uh, techniques in my next video. So the wave nature of the light causes diffraction of light. So what is diffraction? When a beam of light is directed at the edge of an object or an aperture, light appears to bend around the object or the aperture to grab hold the aperture and swing around its geometric shadow. This results in formation of spherical wavelets from each and every point of these waves. In this image, you can see that undeviated light goes straightly away from this aperture, whereas these are the deviated or the diffracted light. Now, most specimens we observe in the microscope are composed of highly overlapping features that are best represented by multiple point sources of light. You can see over here, you can consider these are point sources of light. Now the transmitted light emanating from a point in the specimen plane of the microscope gets diffracted and the divergent diffracted and the non-diffracted light waves are collected by the objective and focused in the intermediate image plane and generate the image over here. So at the intermediate image plane, the image is reconstituted by their subsequent recombination into a magnified image through constructive and destructive interference in the form of small circular diffraction pattern known as ERE pattern. So if you see over here, the constructive interference happens when the phase of the wave matches and their amplitude increases. Whereas in destructive interference, the both the waves are 180 degree out of phase. As a result, their resultant phase uh, nullifies or reduces or cancel each other. This is destructive interference. However, most interference occurs somewhere, somewhere in between. This kind of ERE patterns occurs because light waves emitted from a 
single point source are not focused into a infinitely small point by the objective rather spherical wave coming from defined points as you can see three wave fronts are coming from three points converge together and interfere at different points you can see over here that constructive interference is happening at the center forming the central maxima with highest intensity and followed by the destructive interference in these two points causing the first minima with reduced intensity over here and these happen in the intermediate image plane to produce a diffraction pattern known as airy pattern now we learn that a single point of light never really seen as a point in the microscope rather as a diffraction pattern containing this concentric rings of uh, light surrounded by the central uh, bright disk when viewed in xy plane and these are called airy pattern we already learned about this now in this pattern if you see the central disk or the spot of light having a finite diameter enclosed by a minima this is a minima airy pattern and contains approximately 84 percent of the luminous energy this is known as airy disk and this is named after the english astronomer uh, george Biddle airy this is called the central maxima or the zeroth order of the diffraction which is followed by the first minima then first order second order third order and the so on so on and the three-dimensional diffraction pattern of this airy disk is known as point spread functions airy disk and the point spread functions are the fundamental units of image formation and this phenomenon is caused as light passes through the minute parts of the specimen and the circular back aperture of the objective so in a nutshell the microscope image is the interference effect of diffraction pattern now i will show you an example here you will see that due to the diffraction we do not see an image of a sub resolution bit which is around 200 nanometer as a round bit rather than it will look spreaded in z you can clearly see that it's spreaded in z i hope now you understood the importance of knowing the effect of diffraction in your image it is the diffraction that limits the size of the objects that can be resolved smaller the point source more the diffraction as you can see diffraction angle of the smaller points are bigger than the bigger objects so larger the number of the diffraction order collected by the objective sharper and better are the details in the image and from here the concept of the numerical aperture comes and we will see the importance of numerical aperture on resolution in next slide so what is numerical aperture numerical aperture is the measure of objectives ability to gather the light and resolve the fine specimen details and numerical aperture has been given with this formula where in is the refractive index of the imaging media and theta is the half uh, angular aperture of the uh, objective so higher than na more and more light collecting capabilities but remember higher the na lower the working distance now here you can see that higher the new medical aperture better the light gathering capability of the objective and better the resolution so with the high numerical aperture objective you can clearly see the objects now where to find the numerical aperture well you can clearly see the numerical aperture is written over here on your objective the refractive index of the imaging medium is critical in determining the working numerical aperture of objective as for example over here this is a objective with 0.9 numerical aperture so some of the diffracted lights get reflected or uh, refracted due to the refractive index mismatch between the front lens of the objective and the specimen cover glass due to the presence of air because air having a refractive index of 1 whereas the glass refractive index is 1.51 but in a uh, oil immersion objective where 
uh, oil is being used between uh, the objective lens and the cover glass. There is no such kind of uh, refractive index mismatch. As a result, uh, you can see all the diffracted lights are collected by the objective and there is an increase in resolution. Now, the next question comes then, what is the resolution? The resolution, we can say like the smallest distance between two points on a specimen that can still be distinguished as two separate entities by an objective. So, we can consider the radius of an ARD disk as a uh, limit of your resolution. And this is given by a formula uh, 1.2 lambda by 2 Na, where lambda is the wavelength of the light used and Na is the numerical aperture of the objective. Now, the resolution can be better understood uh, by the Rayleigh criteria. So now, if you see that two ARD disks are approaching towards each other, means they are very close by, then what is the limit that our human eye can distinguish this uh, two ARD disks uh, as separate entity? Well, it is possible when the principal maxima of one ARD disk coincides with the first minima of the second ARD disk. So, this is the radius of one ARD disk you can clearly say. So, this is just sufficient for human eye to see two separate points. Thereafter, if they come closer, then our eye will be not able to distinguish them as a two. Now, we all learned that numerical aperture determines the resolving power of an objective. But the total resolution of microscope system is also dependent upon the numerical aperture of the substage condenser. So, higher the numerical aperture of the total system and the better the resolution. So, you can see the 2NA is actually nothing but the numerical aperture of objective plus numerical aperture of the condenser. Now, the correct alignment of the microscope optical system is also a paramount importance to ensure the maximum resolution. The adjustment of the condenser aperture for accurate light conformation is really crucial to determine the resolution as we learned it during the setting up of colour illumination in my last video. Let's calculate the resolution in a transmitter light microscope using the same formula. The light that we use for transmitter light microscope is a white light and it is centered around 550 nanometer wavelength. So if we use 550 nanometer as a lambda and if we use a objective having a numerical aperture of 1.4 and the condenser generally comes with highest numerical aperture around 0 0.9 then the value you will get around 292 nanometer. Do you know that the wavelength of the light used to image a specimen is a determining factor in resolution also? So lower the wavelength higher the resolution. So, let's do the calculation for the reflected light microscopy and it will be clear to you. So, we will be using the same formula, but here objective works as a condenser. So, we have to uh, multiply the numerical aperture of the objective by 2. And if we use a laser having a wavelength around 488 nanometer, you will be getting a value around 230 nanometer. So, you can clearly see that using a lower wavelength, you are getting better resolution over here. Now, this is what we learned today. The microscope image is the interference effect of a diffraction phenomenon. And smaller the ARD disk, better the resolution because more and more details of the specimen becomes discernible to our eyes. And how we can get the smaller ARD disk? We can use objectives with higher numerical aperture or we can use Objectives of high optical aberration corrections such as fluorite and apochromats. We will learn more about these different kind of objectives in next videos. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for my next videos.